Hello all. Welcome to this video on machine learning. Today I'll give you an introduction to machine learning. We'll begin with the question, what is machine learning? To solve a problem on a computer, we need an algorithm. An algorithm is a sequence of instructions that should be carried out to transform the input to output. For example, one can devise an algorithm for sorting numbers. The input here is a set of numbers and the output is their ordered list. For the same task, there may be various algorithms and we may be interested in finding the most efficient one requiring the least number of instructions or memory or both. For some tasks, however, we do not have an algorithm. One such example is telling spam emails from legitimate ones. We know that the input is an email document, that in the simplest case is a file of characters. We also know that the output should be a yes or a no, indicating whether the message is spam or not. But we do not know how to transform the input to the output. What is considered spam changes in time and from individual to individual. We lack knowledge here, so we make up for in data. We can easily compile thousands of example messages, some of which we know to be spam and some of which are not. And what we want is to learn what constitute spams for them. We may not be able to identify the process completely, but we believe we can construct a good and useful approximation. That approximation may not explain everything, but may still be able to account for some part of the data. We believe that though identifying the complete process may not be possible, we can still detect certain patterns or regularities. They may help us understand the process or we can use those to make predictions. Application of machine learning methods to large databases is called data mining. Its application areas are abundant. In finance, banks analyze their past data to build models to use in credit applications, fraud detection and the stock market. In manufacturing, learning models are used for optimization, control and troubleshooting. In medicine, learning programs are used for medical diagnosis. In telecommunication, call patterns are analyzed for network optimization and maximizing the quality of service. In science, large amounts of data in physics, astronomy and biology can only be analyzed fast enough by computers. But machine learning is not just a database problem, it is also a part of artificial intelligence. To be intelligent, a system that is in a changing environment should have the ability to learn. Machine learning also helps us find solutions to many problems in vision, speech recognition and robotics. Let us take the example of recognizing faces. By analyzing sample face images of a person, a learning program captures the pattern specific to that person and then recognize by checking for this pattern in a given image. This is one example of pattern recognition. We have a model defined up to some parameters and learning is the execution of a computer program to optimize the parameters of the model using the training data or past experience. The model may be predictive to make predictions in the future or descriptive to gain knowledge from data or both. Machine learning uses the theory of statistics in building mathematical models because the core task is making inference from a sample. Now let us look into examples of machine learning applications. The first one will be learning associations. In case of retail, for example a supermarket chain, one application of machine learning is basket analysis which is finding association between products bought by customers. If people who buy X typically also buy Y and if there is a customer 
who buys X and does not buy Y, then he or she is a potential Y customer. Once we find such customers, we can target them for cross-selling. In finding an association rule, we are interested in learning a conditional probability of the form P of Y given X, where Y is the product we would like to condition on X, which is the product or set of products which we know that the customer has already purchased. We may want to make a distinction among customers and towards this estimate, we can take P of Y given X comma D, where D is the set of customer attributes, for example, gender, age, marital status and so on. Assuming that we have access to these information. Next, we look into classification. In credit scoring, the bank calculates the risk given the amount of credit and the information about the customer. Information about the customer includes data we have access to and is relevant in calculating his or her financial capacity, namely income, savings, collaterals, profession, age, past financial history, and so forth. Now, from this data of particular application, the aim is to infer a general rule coding the association between the customer's attributes and his risk. The machine learning system fits a model to the past data to be able to calculate the risk for a new application and then decide to accept or refuse it accordingly. This is an example of a classification problem where there are two classes low risk and high risk customers. The information about a customer makes up the input to the classifier whose task is to assign the input to one of the two classes. After training with the past data, the classification rule learned may be of the form. If income is greater than theta 1 and savings greater than theta 2, then low risk, else high risk for suitable values of theta 1 and theta 2. This is an example of a discriminant. It is a function that separates the examples of different classes. Having a rule like this, the main application will be prediction. Once we have a rule that fits the past data, if the future is similar to the past, then we can make correct predictions for novel instances. Now the graph here is an example of a training data set where each of these circles correspond to one data instance with input values in the corresponding axis and its sign indicates the class. For simplicity, only two customer attributes that is income and savings have been taken as input and the two classes are Low risk which is shown by the plus sign and high risk which is shown by the minus sign. You can also see a discriminant that is separating the two types of examples here. There are other applications of machine learning in pattern recognition. One such application is optical character recognition which is recognizing character codes from their images. In case of face recognition, the input is an image and the classes are the people to be recognized and the learning program should learn to associate the face images to identities. In medical diagnosis, the inputs are relevant information we have about the patient and the classes are the illness. The input contains the patient's age, gender, past medical history, and current symptoms. In speech recognition, the input is acoustic and the classes are words that can be uttered.
Biometrics is recognition or authentication of people using their physiological or behavioral characteristic that requires an integration of inputs from different modalities. Now some examples of physiological characteristics are images of the face, fingerprint, iris and palm. Examples of behavioral characteristics are the dynamics of a person's signature, voice, keystroke, etc. Now we look into regression. Let us say we want a system that can predict the price of a used car. Inputs are the car attributes like brand, year, engine, capacity, mileage and other information that we believe affect the car's worth. The output is the price of the car. Such problems where the output is a number is called a regression problem. Both regression and classification are supervised learning problems where there is an input x, an input y and the task is to learn the mapping from input to output. The approach in machine learning is that we assume a model defined up to a set of parameters which can be written as y is equal to g of x given theta where g is the model and theta its parameters. y is the number if the model is a regression one and is a class code in case the model is for classification. g is the regression, fun regression function and in classification this will be the discriminant function that is separating the instances of different classes. The machine learning will optimize the parameters theta such that the approximation errors are minimized that is our estimates will be as close as possible to the correct values given in the training set. This is a training data set of used cars and the function fitted. For simplicity mileage is taken as the only input attribute and a linear model is used here. In cases where the linear model is too restrictive, we can use a quadratic or higher order polynomial or any other non-linear function of the input, this time optimizing its parameters for best fit. Another example of regression is navigation of a mobile robot, for example an autonomous car, where the output is the angle by which the steering wheel should be turned at each time to advance without hitting obstacles and deviating from the route. Inputs in such a case are provided by sensors on the car like a video camera, GPS and so forth. Training data can be collected by monitoring and recording the actions of a human driver. There are also applications of regression where we are trying to optimize a function. Let us say we are building a machine that roasts coffee. The machine has many inputs that affect the quality like various settings of temperature, times, coffee bean type and so forth. We make a number of experiments for different settings of these inputs. We measure the quality of coffee for example as consumer satisfaction. To find the optimal setting we fit a regression model linking these inputs to coffee quality and choose new points to sample near the optimum of the current model to look for a better configuration. We sample these points, check quality and add these to the data and fit a new model. This is generally called response surface design. Now we look into unsupervised learning. In supervised learning the aim is to learn from a mapping which goes from input to an output whose correct values are provided by a supervisor. In unsupervised learning, there is no such supervisor and we only have input data. The aim is to find the regularities in the input. There is a structure to the input space such that 
certain patterns occur more often than the others and we want to see what generally happens and what doesn't. In statistics, this is called as density estimation. One method for density estimation is clustering, where the aim is to find clusters or groupings of input. For example, in case of a company with the data of past customers, customer data contains the demographic information as well as past transactions with the company. The company may want to see distribution of the profile of its customers to see what type of customers frequently occur. In such a case, clustering model allocates customers similar in their attributes to the same groups, providing the company with a natural grouping of its customers, which is known as customer segmentation. Another interesting application of clustering is in image compression. We know that the input instances of an image will be its pixels which are represented as RGB values. A clustering program groups pixels with similar colors in the same group and such groups correspond to the colors occurring frequently in the image. In document clustering, the aim is to group similar documents. For example, news reports can be subdivided into those related to politics, sports, fashion, arts and so on. Machine learning methods are also used in bioinformatics. Now here, clustering is used in learning sequences of amino acids that occur repeatedly in proteins. This is of interest because they may correspond to structural or functional elements within the sequences that they characterize. Now we look into reinforcement learning. In some applications, the output of the system is a sequence of actions. In such a case, a single action is not important. What is important is the policy. That is the sequence of correct actions to reach the goal. There is no such thing as the best action in any intermediate state. An action is good if it is part of a good policy. In such a case, machine learning programs should be able to assess the goodness of policies and learn from past good action sequences to be able to generate a policy. Such learning methods are called reinforcement learning algorithms. A good example is game playing where a single move by itself is not that important. It is the sequence of right moves that is good. Game playing is an important research area in both artificial intelligence and machine learning. This is because games are easy to describe and at the same time they are quite difficult to play well. A game like chess has a small number of rules but it is very complex because of the large number of possible moves at each state and the large number of moves that the game contains. A robot navigating in an environment in search of a goal location is another application area of reinforcement learning. At any time, the robot can move in one of the number of directions. After a number of trial runs, it should learn the correct sequence of actions to reach to the goal state from an initial state, doing this as quickly as possible and without hitting any of the obstacles. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.